Hi everyone, welcome sa channel natin. Ako nga pala si Janos na Pinoy Tech Dad. Today, pag-uusapan natin for Poco phones. So, meron tayong Poco X5 Pro, Poco X4 GT, Poco F5, and Poco F5 Pro. So, first off, I wanna answer this burning question. May deadboot ba yan? And the answer is... Wala, okay? So yung deadbot issue, kung gusto nyo mapanood, pinag-usapan na po natin yan. Meron akong video dito. So after nyo mapanood yan, pwede kami bumalik dito sa video na to para alam nyo kung anong Poco phone ang nababagay sa inyo. So simulan natin with the Poco X5 Pro. This one is supposedly the weakest among the bunch. But also, dapat nyo tandaan na yung Snapdragon 778G, ito na rin yung pinaka-optimized among the chipsets na pag-uusapan natin dito sa mga Poco phones. So sa CPU throttling test natin ng Poco X5 Pro, sinasabi dito na the CPU throttled down to 95% of its maximum performance. So 5% lang po ng performance ang nawala dun sa buong 15 minutes na test na ginawa natin. That is very good. That is a very consistent performance from a Snapdragon 778G. And you can expect guys na po ang hanap nyo lang talaga is a very consistent performer. Kung casual use lang naman, casual gaming on the side. And then for everyday use and with a good camera, the Poco X5 Pro at less than 15,000 pesos right now. If you check the link in the description box, isa yan sa best choices nyo right now. If you don't really want to go hardcore gaming, but also that doesn't mean na hindi kayo pwede mag-gaming dito kasi malakas pa rin yung chipset na to. This can still give you around 500,000 and 2 to benchmark points if you are gonna use this for performance-based applications. So, huwag kayo mag dito. Hindi kayo makukulangan sa performance dito sa Snapdragon 778G ng Poco X5 Pro. This is still one of the better options. It's just that meron lang mas malakas na nilabas si Poco, which is the Poco F5. And also, the next tier dito sa Poco X5 Pro, if you really want something that games, is a Poco X4 GT, which is what we're gonna be talking about next. So, dito sa Poco X4 GT, you can expect then a very consistent yung performance. So, meron tong Dimensity 8100 na super ganda ang performance pagdating sa throttling test and as well as a actual gaming performance. So, I'm pretty sure maraming Poco X4 GT users dyan na subok na talaga yung kakayahan ng phone na to. So, sana mag-comment kayo. Tulungan natin yung mga viewers natin na makapag-decide if ever nagpipilian nila yung Poco X5 Pro or X4 GT pagdating sa performance in gaming. So, again, from my experience, ang Poco X4 GT is one of the best, if not the best options in the 15,000 peso price range pagdating sa isang gaming phone. So, meron tayong 144Hz na refresh rate. Although, IPS LCD lang siya, napaganda ng quality ng IPS LCD na ginamit na dito, kaya-kaya sumabay with an AMOLED display. But I'm not saying na it's as good as an AMOLED display it's just that medyo malapit-lapit na yung kulay but of course iba pa rin yung actual na AMOLED display which can give you infinite contrast where black is truly black but again kung talagang gusto nyo yung subok na for gaming the Poco X4 GT is still a great choice in 2023 actually sobrang dami sa inyo nagtatanong kung okay pa rin ba or sulit pa rin ba ang Poco X4 GT in 2023 and the answer is a resounding hell yes so kung Makahanap kayo ng good deal on a Poco X4 GT, let's say 15,000 pesos or below. Guys, kunin nyo na yan. If habol nyo is gaming, one of the best options to from Poco. By the way guys, lahat po ng links ng mga Poco phones na babanggitin ko dito sa video, nandyan po yan sa description box para makita nyo yung live na updated price. Okay? Now, panigurado, marami sa inyo ang curious kung saan natin ipopuesto tong Poco F5. Is this way better than the Poco X4 GT in terms of gaming and actual performance? And I would say generally, yes. Kung mapapansin nyo, medyo nag-hesitate ako sabihin na outright na this is way better than the Poco X4 GT dahil meron tayong konting snag or konting issue or problem right now with the Poco F5. And that is with the current update, medyo naging iba na yung takbo ng throttling performance with the CPU throttling test. Now, I wanna make it clear, yung CPU throttling test, dun lang nag-iba yung performance natin. But sa actual gameplay na sinubuan ko with Genshin Impact, it's the same thing. So what's the deal with the Poco F5 pagdating sa CPU throttling test? Well, again, after ko mag-update to the latest firmware, bigla na lang 
pumangit ang performance. So, tinest ko siya several times and the worst one that I got is with a 30-minute test, it throttled down to 59% of its maximum performance. Napakababa po nun. Personally, ang baseline ko is dapat nasa 75 to 80%. Pinakamababa dapat natin makuha na throttling from the phone. But here we are, bumaba tayo na down to 59% of the maximum performance ng CPU na Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. So, ano nga ba nangyari dito? Well, it's Xiaomi doing the same thing again. Pumalpak na naman sila sa mga updates nila. And this should get fixed after another update. But for now, I'm sure marami sa inyo mag-aalala na naku po, napakapangit pala ng CPU throttling performance ng Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. But from my actual test and Actual gameplay using Genshin Impact 1R Plus even after the update guys. Solid pa rin yung performance ito. 42 degrees Celsius pa rin ang pinakamainit na makukuha mo. And also, hindi ganun kapansin yung mga frame drops here and there. Okay? So again, marami sa inyo mag-aalala dahil nga yung CPU throttling performance niya pumangit, bumaba. But sa actual gameplay guys... Trust me, tines ko po talaga. It's 3 a.m. in the morning while I'm recording this video. Talagang pinagpuyatan ko at tines ko ng todo para maibigay sa inyo yung tamang impormasyon. Pero ayun lang, kung hindi kayo panatag or wala talaga kayong tiwala na i-update ulit ni Xiaomi or ni Poco ito para maayos nila itong performance pagdating sa CPU throttling test, then I would recommend kung gusto mong payapa yung isipan mo, eh, Poco X4 GT ka na lang for gaming, hardcore gaming. Again, subok na subok na po yung Poco X4 GT pagdating sa gaming. But yeah, so far, yun pa lang naman yung pinaka-issue na na-encounter ko with the Poco F5, yung nagbagong performance pagdating sa throttling test. Now, sigurado ako na yung mga nag-pre-order at nanonood ng video na to ngayon ay nagpapanik na. Gusto na nilang i-cancel yung order nila or pre-order nila ng Poco F5. And I'm telling you guys, you don't have to panic. You don't have to cancel your pre-order. Maganda pa rin tong Poco F5. You just have to wait for the fix from Xiaomi or Poco. Again, hindi ko alam ba't kailangan nila sumablay the whole time. Ito lang talaga yung problema ni Xiaomi na madalas yung mga firmware updates nila eh, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga minor issues and this one is no different from those previous issues ng MIUI update. So, hmm, nakakainis. So, yung kailangan kang masanay pag nag-Xiaomi or Poco ka, asahan mo na meron at merong sasablay na firmware update na maibibigay sila sa atin. But anyway, let's move on to the creme de la creme, the premium and the top of the line phone, the Poco F5 Pro. So para kanino nga ba to? Well, of course, if you want the best of the best from Poco, this is the one to get. The Poco F5 Pro, meron siyang Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. And this one, kahit na meron tayong latest update dito, hindi naman nagbago yung throttling performance niya. CPU throttling test is still good. So yung mga nag-pre-order nito, wala po kayong dapat ipag-alala. This is a very powerful device. It can last you for several years. Talagang solid for gaming. Maganda rin yung thermal performance if you're gonna play Genshin Impact for long hours. Panalong panalo to. So I would say if you really have the budget, let's make it simple. This is the best that you can get from Poco. Maganda rin po yung camera na sinama nila dito. And speaking of cameras pala guys, if ira-rank natin itong apat na phones, I would say number one is the Poco F5 Pro. Then number two is the Poco X5 Pro. And then number three, which is a close third place, is the Poco F5. And then, pang huli, of course, is the Poco X4 GT. Now, that's not to say na pangat yung camera ng Poco X4 GT. It's just that it has a decent camera but the other three phones are just better. So kung ang habol mo is a camera phone from Poco, Poco F5 Pro na yan, meron ka ng gaming, meron ka ng camera pa. And then of course, very reliable pa rin yung Poco X5 Pro na camera, 108 megapixels. Now medyo gimmicky pa rin yung 108 megapixels but the actual quality ng photos na makukuha natin, that one is not a gimmick, talagang legit na maganda yung photos from this phone. Na pagdating naman sa battery performance ng apat na phones na nandito sa video natin, wala naman ako na encounter na issues pagdating sa battery drain. Lahat sila may decent battery capacity and also can last you for a full day or even more. Again, depending on your usage, depende kung naka Wi-Fi ka or naka mobile data. Okay, so final thoughts for the Poco phones that we have here. So, top of the line, performance, flagship level, no doubt, 
Poco F5 Pro. Kung meron kang budget for this one, this is the one that I would recommend to you. And downside lang is yung design niya is very simple and it's quite uninspiring. But if you just need a phone for performance, ito po yung magbibigay sa inyo ng best performance out there. The Poco F5, I would consider this if medyo kinapos kayo for the F5 Pro and also you want something that has more power and more kick than the Poco X4 GT. But again, you have to take note that as of the posting of this video, eh, meron siyang issue with the thermal throttling test but not with the actual performance so far. So again, tinest ko to both before the firmware update na nagkaroon ng problema sa CPU throttling and parehong ganun pa rin yung performance niya with Genshin Impact at maximum graphics so it didn't really take a hit sa actual performance ng gameplay even for long hours. So 42 degrees Celsius pa rin yung pinakamainit na nakuha natin. And just to be sure guys, also tinest ko with the Redmi Note 12 Turbo and nagulat din ako na nag-iba din yung performance ng Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 dito pagdating sa CPU throttling test. So updated rin po yung firmware nito. So it really seems like this is a problem sa update na binigay sa atin ni Xiaomi. Xiaomi, pakiayos naman yung mga updates nyo. So masablay na naman. And then of course, kung ang budget nyo is nasa 15,000 or below, this could be good choices for you, either the Poco X5 Pro or the Poco X4 GT. For hardcore gaming at 15,000 pesos or below, go for the Poco X4 GT. For a well-balanced performance, maganda yung camera, maganda yung performance pagdating sa gaming, and very consistent yung thermals, go for the Poco X5 Pro. So there you have it guys. Hopefully nakatulong tong video na to sa inyo. And kung nagustuhan nyo yung video na to, tulungan nyo ako by liking this video, mag-comment rin kayo sa comment section, and of course, mag-subscribe na kayo pa abutin natin ng 200,000 subscribers ang Pinoy Tech Dad by the end of the year. And kung gusto mong pang manood ng mga videos ko, may mga ililink po ako dyan. Panigurado, magugustuhan nyo rin yung mga yan. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janos ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo. Kita-kita ulit tayo.